Hello everyone and welcome back to my setting up of Realism Overhaul in preparation for a new series. And last time I went through all the required mods and all the stuff you absolutely need in order to play Realism Overhaul, but while testing it I discovered that we absolutely need a few more things. Uh, in particular we seem to have a little bit of trouble once we hit the water. So here we have better buoyancy and I think that's probably going to be required. So better buoyancy to solve that problem with uh, that caused Jeb to uh, to die. Uh, so we don't want that happening. Oh, I've got a un incomplete download of the newest version of FASA. Let me get rid of that. We'll go with a uh, older version when it comes time to that. Then I'll upgrade later. Anyway, um, so the other thing was uh, the exhaust wasn't showing up on the RL10. And I think the way to solve that is with smokescreen. Now, on the website it says real plumes, and uh, but real plumes is actually something that's built into Realism Overhaul. Uh, real plumes is this stuff here, and as you can see, real plumes actually uh, requires smokescreen, and that's the thing that you need to add. So I think smokescreen is a required mod as far as I'm concerned, even though it's not listed that way. So smokescreen is. Uh, it's another thing that probably should be just required. All right, so uh, with that, we have the two things that I really didn't have that I really needed in the install were clouds and engines. So when it comes to the engines, we have quite a lot of choices. Uh, when it comes to the clouds, not too many. Uh, clouds is either the normal environmental visual enhancements or EVE overhaul. And so here I've got EVE Overhaul. EVE Overhaul is a little bit lighter on the RAM, I believe. At least it feels that way. So I'm going to install that. But it's not really configured for Earth. It's configured for Kerbin. And where that really shows up is with the city lights. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily get rid of the city lights. Now there is another mod called um, uh, RVE or RSS Visual Enhancements. But uh, that one is a huge RAM occupier, and so I am going to hold off on that until I'm sure I have the RAM for it. But for now, I'm just going to get rid of the C lights, which are not properly configured for for Earth. And so I'm going to get rid of this dill as well. And then I'm also going to fix the clouds. So here in Boulder Co. Atmosphere Clouds. Uh, we see the cloud altitude of 4,000, probably, it, oh, hmm, why can I not click, oh, there we go, alright, uh, 8,000 to 10,000 seems alright, let me uh, split the difference and set it to 9,000, and it looks like with EVE overhaul we only have clouds around Kerbin, so uh, with e, uh, environmental visual enhancements you have them around all of the well, all of the planets with atmospheres like, uh, you know, Eve slash Venus and Jupiter slash uh, Joule, uh, but, uh, or Lathe as well. So, and of course, Duna and Mars. But uh, I don't think we have those here. I'm not sure. That would explain why it's a little bit lighter, but uh, I'm not entirely clear on that. We'll just try it out and see. All right. Uh, and then the engines. So we've got the clouds the engines we have a lot of choices we have uh, for instance AIES Aerospace has some engines and to some extent you'll have to play around and see what type of engines you want to use because they're all configured for different engines there is some overlap um, if you're using AIES um, Nova Punch and uh, KW Rocketry those will provide a somewhat continuous set of engines and then the other option is FASA plus um, Bobcat Soviet Engine Pack. I think the only thing that's lacking from FASA and Bobcat Soviet Engine Pack is is uh, the post Saturn V American engines and sort of the post Saturn V, uh, the post nineteen seventy. Let's say uh, no, no. This even the more modern Russian engines are in there. So it's really just the well, uh, you'll, you'll miss some engines either way. But the main one that's missing for me is the Spatial Main Engine 
Uh, there is the Russian equivalent of that uh, in the Soviet engine pack, but it's not quite the same. So, yeah, that would be in the Nova Punch pack, I believe, is where you would get the Space Shuttle main engine. All right, so, but uh, the ones in the Soviet engine pack and FASA look better. So I'm going to start out, I'm going to unzip FASA, and with its JSI, uh, that's the raster prop monitor, which isn't uh, updated yet for this version, I believe. And so we're going to have to wait on that. So we're not going, that just means we're not going to get the in-cockpit displays. Okay, and I can deal with that. Okay, and Soviet engine pack. All right, so we've got engines now, many more engines than we had before. Uh, let's go through the structure of these. The Soviet engine pack is simply the engines, and in total, they give you 150 megabytes. <laughs> So it's a pretty heavy pack, but it's not as heavy as FASA. FASA, you've got an Apollo. You can only delete uh, folders uh, like Apollo, ICBM, Mercury, and Gemini. The uh, the others you should probably not touch. And right now I'm going to delete ICBM. Uh, Mercury and Gemini I might have to delete depending on RAM space. And it's got a how to delete parts thing here. So be careful. Uh, if you try and delete stuff. Uh, inside the folders it might also cause problems I don't know why but uh, it's just from experience okay uh, the last thing we typically need is MechJeb so let's add MechJeb now with MechJeb I'm also going to uh, copy over a file that I use in in many series including my colonization series and that's the one that adds mechjeb to the command modules the structure of this looks like this uh, so this is the thing that adds hold on let me drag it in once it lets my cursor control things hello there we go alright uh, so this is the thing that adds mechjeb to all the command modules you just have uh, something like this added into the game data folder and it tells a uh, module manager it's actually module manager commands uh, telling it to add mechjeb so I'm just gonna copy that over okay uh, let's see what our RAM usage is with this installation of realism overhaul now we've got a lot more engines probably I'm going to need to get rid of some stuff from FASA but we'll see Okay, here's KSP loading up, and you'll see this warning from Engine Igniter. I've already checked. This is the best version of Engine Igniter. This is the most updated version of Engine Igniter. It just works with 0 0.90, despite the fact that the mod itself says that it wants 0.25. So we'll just ignore that. Okay, memory usage up to 1.9 gigabytes already. We're just loading in FASA. The big spike occurs when a uh, real solar system does its thing, and after that it sort of recedes, so the question is whether it can get over that hump. As long as the program can get over the part where it loads in real solar system, it should be alright. And we'll see what sort of peak it gets to at that point. We are already way outstripping the previous install. We are now at uh, 2.9 gigabytes of RAM. Now, we haven't installed any sort of alleviating things such as such as uh, active texture management or the OpenGL fix, I mean, uh, forcing OpenGL uh, or anything like that. I could dump the squad parts, which are, especially the fuel tanks, are completely useless. There are a lot of things I can do still. But I want to see where we're at in terms of RAM based on this current installation. Okay, module manager is doing his thing and we are at pretty much three gigabytes of RAM. Okay, uh, now the RAM usage has receded. We're at 2.5 gigabytes heading into real solar system. 
Okay, real solar system is done, and we're at 2.7 gigabytes of RAM. So, uh, no need to delete anything just yet. Uh, we'll we'll be doing more stuff, I'm sure, uh, adding more mods in and all that. Uh, I did solicit uh, any mod requests, and uh, so far I haven't gotten too many of those. Uh, we we are good on RAM, it looks like. Okay, so here we are at the space center and let's build a rocket and that's when KSB crashed um, I took a look at the output log I'm not entirely sure what happened there it was loading a bunch of stuff but didn't seem like anything in particular should have caused a problem uh, let, well, let's try it again okay this time we are very perilously close to Ramlet here we're at 3.46 gigabytes right now and so maybe that's what caused the crash. In fact, it was sort of not being entirely forthcoming about the RAM usage last time. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but yeah, we're pretty close. And I still want to put better textures on Kerbin. By the way, you'll see that there are no clouds on this curb, uh, not Kerbin, Earth. Uh, there are no clouds on this Earth, but actually... Uh, uh, there will be once we get in there, but let's see if we can actually do this. Uh, probably I underestimated the RAM that I'm taking here. Okay, we're back and it looks like it's shaved about 200 megabytes of RAM off of the usage. And so uh, what we did was we deleted Mercury and Gemini from FASA, which uh, still keeps most of the engines. It just uh, dumps the capsules and a lot of other parts. Um, but on the other hand, we added in the better textures for Earth, Moon, and Mars. So, But on balance, we saved RAM like that. Here we go again. Terrain still looks a little bit dark. But anyway, uh, we're, we're in somewhat dicey territory. We're at 3... 0.375 and I, st I don't see any clouds. Let's try the tracking station. Well, there's clouds here. I guess it's just a clear day out. Uh, looking at it, yeah, they're, they're just, well, I mean, I don't know if we could tell from this thing, actually. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, I guess it's just a clear day out. We'll, we'll hunt for clouds. That's what we're going to do. We're going to launch Jeb. Uh, no, not Jeb. Darn it. Uh, Bill, I guess. No, let's, let's we should find a pilot of some kind. Uh, mm, yeah, a little bit of trouble loading in the textures. Astronaut complex. Um, who are we gonna have? Pilots. Pilots. Well, not and then no particularly courageous pilots here. Let's just go with Danbo. Okay. So we're going to launch Danbo Kerman and try to get him to orbit. Oh, that can't be right. Okay, that's it. I'm going to Active Texture Management Basic. Let me do that. Okay, wow, that took a while. It, installing Active Texture Management Basic always takes a long time on the first startup, and that took an exceptionally long amount of time, but it was worth it. Uh, we went from using 3.2 gigabytes of RAM to now 2.47 gigabytes, so about 700 megabytes worth, worth of RAM saved. Now, I could have gone the OpenGL route, and that would have resulted in a much quicker startup, but uh, let's try this out. So uh, we know the effect of ATM Basic, about 700 megabytes of RAM there. All right, here we go again. Uh, let's just for my sanity. Let me let me make sure clouds eventually roll by. I don't know. Oh wait, wait, wait! Clouds. Okay, good. All right, VAB again. Okay, this time everything looks right. We're running at 2.6 gigabytes of RAM, and let's let's build a a rocket to get into orbit. So just capsule, uh, I guess we should uh, add on the RCS this time as well. Uh, probably like that. Let's see, where's the center of mass on this thing? Yeah, it's right down there. Okay, 
and they are configured for hydrazine that's fine so we fill this up with hydrazine that's good let's get delta V stats out and what we need is a new stage I'm gonna use the same upper stage that I did last time but it's gonna look different because we've got the got the FASA version of it so what we have see these are the FASA engines you note that they look quite quite remarkable yeah much better than the stock engines obviously uh, but what I want is th uh, the same engine that I used last time the RL10 except now it looks like this and it's not 2.5 what, what was it uh, here 2.5 meter RL10 series uh, this one is more reasonable now you can configure which type of RL10 it is here there are different versions of the RL10 and but I'll just stick to the A3 that's fine all right and uh, this time I'm gonna make these cryogenic tanks because that's what you need for liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen and so I'm going to do that and maybe a little bit bigger let's go for a six minute burn time six minutes there we go that's pretty pretty quick uh, when you think about the thrust to weight ratio here but that's good enough okay and let's make it just plain white for now what engine will work out that's not good enough we need something that can carry about 60 tons that's way too powerful that's that's the engine for the Saturn 5 rocket that will do but it's probably not the only thing still got 200 on the surface level ISP there okay H1 it is then okay and that means we're I might as well go with cryogenic tanks here as well but I think we're gonna end up with a pretty high thrust weight ratio up there but that's alright our test pilot will just have to deal with that this time because we're doing a test run and there are other things we need to check out let's make this green let's get to nine on the max TWR that's still pretty high I mean on a man mission you'd want four more like it but again test okay so I added separation boosters and everything else and I used the offset tool to tuck the separation boosters a little bit closer in and everything seemed to be staged all right and I think that's a go but I wanted to go over the engines that we added so uh, we added the service module engine from the Apollo obviously these are all Apollo related engines because that's the engine that's the pack that we kept we dumped Mercury and Gemini uh, this Aerojet M1 the lunar module descent engine the ascent engine both very important these are from the Soviet engine pack, the RD-0110 and 0124. This is the uh, one for the Energia rocket, which is the equivalent of the space shuttle main engine. And so this is an upper stage engine equivalent to the RL-10. And so this is the most powerful rocket engine ever built, as it says, and uh, so forth. There's the RL-10. That's probably the the most trusty stalwart engine that we've got here. And the J-2 for the second stage of the Saturn V rocket. Some more. I don't know why the Soviet engines and the uh, fast engines seem to be spread all around here. Uh, filter by function. Filter by... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I could figure things out. But... Well, okay, whatever. Let's just launch, can we? Uh, crew, not Bill, Danbo. Let's go. As you can probably tell, I haven't been using the filter functions very much. And so, yep, I gotta, gotta learn how to do that. I don't know if it's really necessary or not, but anyway, here we are. Danbo Kerman's ready to go, and we're gonna see where this works better than last time. We gotta get all the way to orbit and uh, better buoyancy had better 
make sure that we can splash down properly this time. Alright, here we go. Ooh. Nice sound effects, and launch. Okay, starting to turn. Wow, that thing gimbals like anything. Anyway, and that's the beauty of the FASA engines. I mean, you can see they look great. But uh, what we're going to soon see is the effect of smokescreen, which will give us a nice real plume starting soon, I think. Let's see. Wow, look at that. Ah, we're getting a real plume here. Look at that. Now we're talking. I like how the gimbling uh, adjusts the smoke trail. That's neat. Okay, this is annoying. And I'll show you why this is annoying. This is annoying because I can't make cinematics in this phase with this message here. Somebody please tell me how to get rid of that message. I need to get rid of that message. Pronto. I've tried. I've tried to look for a setting that uh, puts that message up there. I can't find it. It it's, has to do with realism overhaul. It's not real shoots because it happens when real shoots is not installed. I tested that out. So, no real shoots, I still get that message. And it's uh, realism overhaul. If I delete realism overhaul, that message goes away. But if I'm gonna record cinematics, I need to not have that there. And of course, with this plume, I really do want to record cinematics. I mean, come on. Tell me that doesn't look good, right? Getting seriously heated up here, but not beyond tolerances. G-forces going up pretty spectacularly. Obviously we've got a little bit of spin, we have no control over that right now. I could put S uh, RCS on, but probably not a good idea at this stage. Let's see our orbit info. Looking good so far. Okay, I, I love those effects. And now, first stage separation. And I'm throttling down because we're just going to coast to Applapsis here. I'm not going to light the RL-10 just yet. And that's one good thing about having the RCS. I know I can settle down the fuel for the engine. Right now it's already very unstable. Uh, but I can use the RCS to settle down the fuel. So we're just coasting up here. I have no other control. I'm, as you can see, pitching, rolling, yawing. No control because there's no torque in the pod. And hopefully that's not going to become an issue. And especially since we have now got RCS, we should be fine. But gotta make sure. Oop, oh, 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 went too far. Okay, so RCS on. Uh, very unstable. Oh, very stable. Okay. Well, actually, um, I might have misjudged this badly. Throttle. Okay, RCS works. Engine works, but I'm going down very quickly. Oh, uh, crap. Fortunately, we have a lot of extra Delta V. I should have started that out way earlier. I overdid it on the time warping. 
but yeah, we do have extra delta V here. So uh, in the without the smoke screen, we couldn't see any exhaust from this engine, but now we see this little blue hue. You definitely see it like this, and so I guess that's the way it's supposed to look. And I don't know if you get that without smoke screen. It didn't seem like it, so that's why I say smoke screen is necessary. Atmosphere is at 130 in this version of Real Solar System. And at that point, KSB crashed. Now, from the output log, I think it might be the fact that Raster Prop Monitor isn't properly configured with this version. Uh, there was a memory, uh, it went out of memory, but that was because it was getting a lot of errors, and I think there was some sort of uh, overflow of some kind. I hesitate to even use that word. Uh, well, one flight is in progress. Let's see what, what's going on there. Nope, it seems to be on the launch pad. Okay, um, if it is raster prop monitor, then it won't have any effect if I use a, a unmanned pod. So I'm going to recover Danbo. I'm going to launch an unmanned probe this time, and that'll allow us to test remote tech. Right now we're at 2.8 gigabytes of RAM, by the way. So, hmm, unmanned. Not too many choices. Ah, we could launch Mechjeb. <laughs> Six tons. Pretty hefty. Ah, part not supported by RO. Oh well. Not like that matters, but uh, still. Anyway, uh, how about this uh, Explorer Probe Core? That's very, 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 very light. It's got an integrated omni range of 500 kilometers and an always on antenna. So we don't have to sl slap on an extra antenna if we're just going to go to space. Let's try and go to space. Well, I don't know. I wanted to test splashdown, but yeah, let's test uh, remote tech first. That's fair enough. Uh, so we're going to launch it across and then once we're out of 500 kilometers, it should lose connection. So I'm going to test that it has connection at the launch pad and that it loses connection and uh, we'll see if there's any problems here. Okay, but otherwise, uh, let's let's go with a solid fuel booster. I'm just trying things out here, folks. Uh, let's go with a single big solid fuel booster. Yeah, something like that, except not with five seconds worth of duration. Uh, two minutes sounds good. Still a lot of kinks to work out here, obviously, if it's just going to randomly crash on me. But let's go with this. Now, the more perceptive of you will have realized that even if I turn SAS on, it really doesn't matter because I have no control over where this goes once it's launched. I'm just checking out connection here and making sure things don't randomly crash with this. I guess it's not the best test of that, but I also want to test remote tech. So here we go and launch. So again, I have no steering control because well, it's a solid uh, fuel booster. I I don't think, does it have gimbling? Maybe a little tiny bit. Let me see. It has a little bit of gimbling, I guess. Uh, nice big plume right away this time. Didn't have to wait for that. I don't feel much control over this. I don't think I've launched it far enough to really test whether remote tech will lose connection. Yeah, I don't think we've gone too far. Nope. Maybe the horizon issue will come into play. Yeah, let's let's br bring it all the way back down and see if the horizon issue comes to play. Just waiting to see if we lose connection here. Eventually the horizon should... Well, we we're actually so close, darn it. We're too close to really make this test worthwhile.
Huh. No explosion, no splash, no effect at all. That was weird. I was not expecting that. I was also not expecting the fact that we we're still connected somehow. What, what's that all about? Okay. Oh, well, vessel destroyed. All right. Let's try something else. Okay, this is probably ridiculous, but hey, it's it's got the Delta V to get to orbit. At least it says so. Um, this is not the purpose that the RL-10 was meant for. Actually, maybe this would be a good time. Oh, why is it doing it like that? Uh, to use the RL-10 B2 and make a larger rocket out of this. Then again, the well, who cares about the thrust weight ratio when there's no body on board? I suppose. No, there doesn't seem to be any good reason to... Well, they'll make for a more spectacular launch, I suppose. Okay, uh, yeah, that's interesting. And uh, what we've got in here is these little guys, which are... Let's see if I can find them. Here are these baby sergeants. And this says attaches under the Explorer probe, so I've done that sort of thing. And uh, we've got other clusters of them. And so I've just staged them like that. I've got a battery and a reaction wheel because otherwise I'm not going to have much control at all. And yeah, well, here's another thing that we're just going to try out because I'm curious. I'm going to have to do more robust tests of this whole install of Realism Overhaul off to the side. Right now I'm just having a little bit of fun. Alright, so let's try it out. Okay, here we go. I'm also, of course, seeing whether anything else will make this install crash. We're at 3.2 gigabytes of RAM now, so it seems to build up, quite unfortunately. Alright, here we go. Okay, it is running, and go! RL-10 being used as base staged. This is horrible, but it's going up. As, uh, it doesn't really have much of an exhaust. Well, it's got a tiny little exhaust plume. Uh, let's see if we can... You can sort of see the little specks there. I don't know. There you go. Not much of one. Very... Oh, I, I better turn now, huh? Very sedate sort of rocket. It's lulling me into a false sense of security, not realizing that it's going quite fast already. Not having exhaust makes it seem like it's not going very fast. Oh, we've got a hydrogen-oxygen imbalance. I wonder why that is. So obviously this is the only engine it's configured for. Shouldn't be an imbalance in the fuel and oxidizer. That's strange. Oh, maybe it's because I changed to the B2. That's right. Uh, yeah, it's because I changed to the B2 ver variant and I should have reloaded the fuels at that point. happened quicker than I thought it would. Okay. Huh. Alright, uh, so we'll have to go a little bit smoother through that. Uh, let's try again. Ah, uh, That's not right. No, that's not right at all. Okay. On, <laughs> on this note, I think I'd better quit out. So, uh, Realism Overhaul, I'm going to have to figure a few things out here. If you have any idea about some of these glitches, uh, feel free to tell me. I would love to know. And, um, yeah, yeah, lots of work to do here before I can start a series just yet. But there you go. Uh, we tested a few more things. I think the better buoyancy will satisfy, uh, will, will solve the 
splashdown issue. And we definitely have plumes now, so that's good. And lots of engines, but other issues. There are other issues. All right, <laughs> so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.